Hi everybody, how y'all doing? Um, this is actually kind of a recommendation. Uh, I've been watching videos on, I guess it's like the Coptic Youth Channel or something like that. Um, and there is a particular father who's a monk um, and he lives at uh, St. Anthony's Monastery. He's like in Egypt, I guess. And he's Coptic and listening to him is really, really interesting. Um, he was also in a movie about the Jesus Prayer that I just absolutely loved. Um, so I've, I've kind of been like <laughs> maxing out on what he says just because it's amazing to listen to him and he's very easy to relate to and the things he says are incredibly beautiful and you know you can tell it's very deeply heartfelt on his part. So I'm gonna put this little part of the episode in, uh, in the, the one that I'm referring to because um, it reminded me of something today. Um, I, I remember when I was like, I don't know, 13, 14 or something, and um, my grandmother was watching me wipe the table and she looked at me and she said, if you're going to take the time to do something, take the time um, and then you know you can do it well. And I was kind of like, I didn't even realize I was rushing through it. And she said something about, you know, sometimes if you rush, you have to do something again. So that if you, you know, take your time. Well, I, in many ways I'm a very patient person, but in other ways, I don't know if it's like a Chicago thing, like rush, 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 rush. Um, but in other ways, you know, like totally yoga, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. So... I remember when I was in Japan, um, <laughs> um, and this is like a reference to the Matrix because <laughs> um, the Oracle, you remember her? Um, and this is the first Matrix, not like the second or third or whatever. Um, I had, it was raining outside and um, I was, I was, I walked into a sushi bar and it was one of those that was a rotary sushi and you would just pull it off the um, conveyor belt and then uh, put it into a tray and you packed it for yourself and so I, I, I think, and this is a dancer thing, like I grew up dancing a lot um, in lots of different ways. There, there is like a klutziness to dancers. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why that is, I guess because like when you get used to doing steps that are what you are going to do when you when you have ones that are improv right real life walking will like trip over things that aren't there trip over our toes and and we'll recover pretty <laughs> but you know it's kind of like ah, flailing around in between time i don't think that i might have looked frenetic to another american but to a Japanese, I did, because the pacing of the way that they do things, um, and this is in the city as well as the rural areas that actually I was in, um, it, they, they are incredibly mindful of whatever it is that they're doing, and they, they relish in incredibly simple and beautiful activities. Sometimes they're the most mundane, they just relish every part of it, every moment of it. Um, and that's just part of their culture, the way that they are, that that they savor it, you know? Um, and so <laughs> the woman looked at me and I, I hadn't tripped over the sliding door to get it, but I probably looked like I might have been ready to or something. Like the tip of my <laughs> shoe might have been caught, but it but it wasn't. I was able to kind of like get away from it, and then you know, like I put a, I put a, I put apart I put away my um, umbrella, and then you know I went about to collect everything. And as I was walking up to the rotary, she looked at me and she said, "Take your time." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> And she sounded like the oracle to me right then. I was like, oh my gosh, it's still me rushing. So, <laughs> with no reason to be, you know. So I was watching, and I'll put it, like I said, in the description, 
um, Father Anthony talk about um, you know mindfulness as far as when he does certain things but that the one moment when he takes his mind off God how it just makes him vulnerable and I'm going to use this description he didn't say this but I'm saying it, it, it almost seemed like it, it was an open curtain that allowed in you know the evil one and um, just negativity just just because he you know like in in, in a sports thing they'll say keep your eye on the ball yeah he took his mind off of um, you know what he was really supposed to be thinking of and I remember very uh, well it must have been 11 months ago I had a dream and this was a three-part dream that happened over 16 15 16 years and um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys want to hear that but it's kind of a difficult one for me to talk about but the end result of it was that I was being shown and told that in my mind the only thing I was to focus on to keep my mind just totally um, focused towards is Christ um, always and um, <laughs> It, it was so that everything else in the world was a complete distraction and that and that anything else wouldn't do anything for me except to be that distraction and that you know ooh shiny things there's gonna be a lot of them I mean you remember that survivor episode where they were standing on poles and this one lady her bra had slipped and she'd said her her opponent said something oh honey you got your and she looked down to adjust her straps or something cover up for you know like the possible uh, you know, <laughs> what do they call those um, wardrobe malfunctions? <laughs> and because she she looked down, she she lost, she fell off the pole. And I think about that um, just in terms of you know what what are you focusing on when you're doing whatever it is? And of course in yoga, you know, and in, when I was studying Buddhism, everything was you know being mindful. I mean, but you know even Ram Dass, you know, be here now. I mean, I grew up with all of that. <laughs> It's not like it's a new concept. But today, for some reason, and I don't know why, I found myself in my kitchen um, kind of rushing through some tasks I was doing. And, and I realized I was doing it, and I just stopped. And I was like, oh, why am I rushing? I want to enjoy this, because I love doing chores like that. So I slowed down, and I realized... Um, just being able to experience it in the moment and enjoying it. And I realized that um, it gave me so much more time because I wasn't rushing. And it wasn't the illusion of time. Like, I literally had more time um, because I wasn't stressing myself out. Um, so, it's kind of like a full circle thing for me, especially <laughs> from all the different ways that I've ever heard that concept displayed to me. Um, how many, it took 40, almost 44 <laughs> years for it to finally click. So there you go. Click. Peace.